it's 2015. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Bulltramp, and right now I'm at Clash Con. It's about time. Liam is mad. You will regret the day you crossed Angry Neeson 52. I sound weird. Yo, guys, what's up? Happy Kids. Today I'm going to be showing you my setup. And Supercell has another title up its sleeve called Clash Royale. But what no one knew. An idea comes up. Project Laser. Well, we aren't there yet, but Project Laser was the name given to a project Supercell would start working on in 2015. And if you think that it has anything to do with Bra Stars, you are absolutely right. A small team made up of developers from all Supercell games start prototyping this Project Laser, a multiplayer action shooter. The team was confident that this would be the next big hit, a game that fits Supercell's criteria, which is to make games that are played by as many people as possible, enjoyed for years, and remembered forever. Project Laser was meant to be a multiplayer action shooter that followed a similar control format as Clash of Clans and Heyday. So Supercell mentioned that they didn't want to follow what everyone else did, which was dual joysticks. It was just too bland and the team didn't really like it. They wanted something different with that Supercell touch. And I don't blame them for wanting to stand out. What you're seeing right now is the earliest known footage ever released of Brawl Stars, aka Project Laser. It might seem rather odd. I mean, after all, this looks nothing like Brawl Stars. And the controls. Where are they? As we mentioned, the idea of dual joysticks was ruled out. So what you're seeing here is a combination of tap to walk and tap to shoot. Everything was tap based. As I stated, like Clash of Clans and Heyday. Analyzing the footage a bit more, we can see that this is also the first version of what we know today as gem grab. The objects in the ground have a timer, and when the timer is up, gold objects pop out. I'm not really sure what those are, but they look like gold, or maybe they're golden rocks. The two teams here have to fight to grab the most number of those gold objects. Now we're getting somewhere. Although this looks nothing like Brawl Stars, we know that this is basically a prehistorical look at a gem grab match. The first update to Project Glazer, which we'll refer to as Phase 2, contained most of the core mechanics that the game had in its first phase, but still managed to change a lot, and it felt closer to the first public beta of Brawl Stars release in 2017. Firstly, the game was now in portrait mode. Previously, Phase 1 was landscape. As we know, this will later become sort of a dilemma. But besides the game's orientation, we can see the game was still a space-themed game. Coin Rush, better known as Gem Grab later, was still there and the graphics were updated. Now, the hero screen is where a certain thing stands out, and it's this robot. Although all of the other brawlers or heroes look unfamiliar, this little guy still remain in the game to this day, also known as the mini robots in Robo Rumble, or as some people like to call him, Speedy Boy. It's very interesting to see one character who survived the many phases Brawl Stars went through and the many years. It's amazing. Moving on here was the loading screen, very basic with the name Laser. Looking a little more at the gameplay, there was still no joysticks. Tap to walk, tap to shoot, and the buttons, which we already had in phase one, your super, and the quit button. This is also still a gem grab match with a few changes. It was now referred to as Coin Rush as we mentioned, and the amount spawn was greatly reduced. Now teams had to fight to be the first to hold 10 coins, and this time, it was actually coins. Overall, Phase 2 looked more familiar to the 2017 beta, but it still had a long way to go. It's now March 8th, 2017. We've moved away from the name Project Laser, and now the project is called 
slugfest. But for the small team working on the project, this was still Project Laser at heart. In this phase, the game went through a drastic change in graphics and overall theme. Slugfest had a more western theme compared to the previous phase, which was more of a space theme. This phase looked very similar to those who played in the early soft launch days. As we can see, Colt and Shelly making their first appearance are seen in the loading screen. It's unclear if they were still referred to as heroes or brawlers, but in the selection screen here, Colt and Shelly seem to be the only characters who look familiar. Except one notable one, the Hog Rider. Yes, it appears the Hog Rider from Clash Royale and Clash of Clans was also featured in Brawl Stars. The reason for removal was never discussed, but my best guess was that it was simply a placeholder. Brawl Stars today shares no characters with any other Supercell game unless it's a special event or a skin. So maybe that's also a reason why it was scrapped, to make more room for more original and unique characters. If you're wondering who's playing the game as well, it's actually a real player that isn't a developer. Slugfest was the first version to ever have a user testing stage so that they can gather real feedback from real players. Hopping into a match, things continue to look more like soft launch, especially the environment. Once again, there were no joysticks. Everything was tap based. And you might be thinking, well, it's been like that for two years. That's completely fine. But there was one major problem. The test users were playing completely different as the developer team. The team was holding their phones to play like this, one hand holding the phone and the other to do all of the tapping. But users were holding their phones in a texting position, the most comfortable position, so they could use both thumbs. The team quickly realized that the pace of the game they were aiming for in phase one and two didn't work with real players. Instead, what they had created was a hectic, fast-paced mess. This is not how Supercell imagined it would be. So they were back at square one with the one problem of controls. The dreaded joystick, as one developer called it, was finally here. But it wasn't exactly bad, it was a start. The joystick was placed at the bottom left or right of the screen depending on if you're left or right handed. And it was used to move your character, so now instead of tapping to walk you now had an optional joystick setting. There were still issues though, the joystick they had designed drifted around the screen too much. It wasn't in a fixed position nor in a fixed area. So it was just wild. Despite having problems with the joystick, Supercell claimed that players who played the game seemed to overlook those issues and still had a ton of fun. Clearly they were doing something right. The game is fun, but the controls, they could be better, you know? Aside from the additional joystick, the game got some minor graphical changes. Most notably, Shelly's design. She went from looking like this to this. This is obviously far from her final design, but we know that the team was having a bit of fun on how they wanted the character's environment to look. After all, throughout this point, the game got a few changes. Another small change was Coin Rush was now referred to as Gem Grab. It's unclear if this was changed in phase 3 or 4, but this is the first ever gameplay found to refer to it as gem grab. The game was looking better overall, it felt better, it played better, and people actually enjoyed it, but the team was stuck on what control format was best, tap to walk or joystick. The testing didn't lead to any conclusive decision either, so they decided to let the players choose, which may seem like a good idea, but that also led to really nowhere. Or so they thought. After analyzing the data a bit closely, a developer found that more players ended up switching to a joystick after playing for a bit. So, at default, new testers were now given a joystick, and tap to walk was left on the back burner as an option. After a few years of development and many changes to the original project, the team felt that it was the right time to finally unveil it to the public. The name Brawl Stars, which was chosen between anywhere from Phase 4 to 5, was publicly announced for iOS 
on June 14th, 2017. The game was released a day after the announcement, and the game was now in its public beta, available to be played in Canada and, as we mentioned, only on iOS devices. This is known as a soft launch. During that time though, the game had received some graphical changes, new upgrade systems, but most importantly was that the game was switched to a landscape mode and added a second joystick. The one thing the team disliked came back as a savior. This decision was based on a few factors. Everyone knows the good old tale that it was either landscape or kill the game, but there's a few more reasons. The less popular known one is due to portrait mode not being able to fit two joysticks. The team felt that two joysticks was better and so in order to fit them into the game it had to be landscape. This deemed to be better. As quoted by a developer, it was a more natural method of controlling the game. This came with one small problem though. It wasn't a huge deal, but because testers and beta players were already used to tapping to shoot, Supercell needed to make the second joystick also a button. So auto aim was added as a fix. If you ever wondered why we had that, there's your answer. On December 12th, 2018, Global was announced. Brawl Stars has come a long way since Project Laser, starting off as a simple project with a vision, ended up being in the big leagues of Supercell games. And as many of you have probably already guessed, Project Laser, the mini game that was playable by tapping on 8 bits multiple times, was directly linked to the game's past. August 20, 2020 was the day the minigame was first seen. Presumably, it's a 5 year anniversary of when the team came up with the idea or started working on the project. Project Laser on August 20, 2015. And that is the story behind Project Laser. We're definitely skipping over quite a bit of history here though, so I recommend you to check out my History of Brawl Stars video if you're interested in learning every change that occurred from a soft launch all the way till today. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Big shout out to my most recent channel member, Bot4. I greatly appreciate the support, man, and thank you for being part of the Dank Army. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching. Peace!